Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get going, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the question box. If you're seeing my screen all right and hearing me clearly, just type OK in the box, please. All right, great. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, please feel free to let me know. Uh, as always, keep in mind, each and every trade has risk of loss, uh, but the flip side of that is each and every trade has a good potential for profits as well, uh, which is why we're all here to try and go about things uh, from an educational perspective, not to be taken as financial advisement. We'll be going over some ideas and strategies that will hopefully uh, help with your uh, P&L at the end of the day. Now, there are a number of uh, features that will help with your risk management side of things that, that we'll kind of go over within our strategies today uh, as we take into account the fundamental situation. Uh, we'll look at how the, the web trader platform and our Avatrade Go mobile app can help you with your risk management side of things. Uh, real quick, what is fundamental analysis? Uh, basically, it's the news around the world. It's uh, headlines it's regular regular economic events maybe there's you know gdp numbers coming out or factory production numbers unemployment figures uh these types of scheduled economic uh events uh you could find on a economic calendar we have one in our web trader and our mobile app uh, where you can check and see which announcements are coming for which countries uh, and the scope and timing of that type of fundamental news is uh quite predictable the other type of fundamental news that, that we talk about sometimes is what we might call extraordinary uh, economic news. And uh, you know we've had big examples of extraordinary news uh, in the past couple years uh, with a global pandemic, with uh, war between Russia and Ukraine breaking out, uh, and now the hyperinflation that kicked in, and uh, on and on. So. These are things that weren't scheduled. They weren't 100% predictable, but they certainly are fundamental uh, type of news that helps to uh, form maybe uh, pressure on different instruments in one direction or another. And so uh, if we take into account this type of fundamental news, we should be maybe in a stronger position to predict uh, which way you might believe different instruments will move uh, in the short term and, and in the in the longer term. So as we go along, if you have questions uh, or if you want to give input, you can use the, the communication box there uh, to do so. Now, on our main website, uh, you can find our Arbitrade Go mobile app, which I spoke about having great risk management features. It's got technical analysis, fundamental analysis features from Trading Central that can help you out. Uh, and if you go to trading platforms, Avatrade Go, you can download the app to your mobile devices uh, from, from your app store. There are links to the app store here. And uh, I think you'll like the, the functionality and features of the app as you're going through your fundamental analysis, technical analysis. Uh, our web trader also has all of those same features that our app has. And so to, to utilize our web trader, you just log in here from the main website. And that takes you to a platform that looks very similar to our mobile app and has the same functionality and features. And so what we're looking at then is, since this is a fundamental analysis webinar, we might think, well, how can I do fundamental analysis here uh, from the web trader or from the app? And so uh, this platform and our app trade right on your MT4 and MT5 accounts. You can choose which account you want to be in. I'm in a kind of a dummy real account here, and but you can switch between demo and real, etc. MT4, MT5 with one click and be trading on the other account. Now, Trading Central has an economic calendar I mentioned, so you can load that, and there are all kinds of nice features on the economic calendar. Uh, more than you'd see on, on really any other economic calendar out there. Uh, as, as you start to get into a particular announcement, 
Uh, you can click on view levels and get all kinds of expanded information. Uh, what's happened in the past, over the past uh, time periods, what kind of movement occurred on the charts. You can get all kinds of data uh, so much that it, that I, I wouldn't go over the whole thing in a webinar, but uh, play around with this chart and you'll see that the announcements that are upcoming or that have already occurred, you can go back and see, well, what kind of movements traditionally have occurred over the last year, last month, last uh, however long uh, with that announcement. And you can get a lot of data and information surrounding these announcements other than just the, the raw data as it comes out as well. You know, was it better than expected, worse than expected? And those sorts of things can move the markets. So it's something that's right there on the web trader and in our app. Now, one thing we could look at as well is market buzz for fundamental news. And so uh, whatever it is that you're interested in, we can find uh, fundamental news on stocks, cryptos, standard currencies, commodities, indices, et cetera. And so if I'm looking at stocks, I can see, well, which one's trending the most? And 3M happens to be in the news the most. Look at the size of that bubble compared to the others. Uh, Coca-Cola, et cetera, all the stocks that are trending are here. And the larger the bubble, the more they're trending. So let's see what's going on with 3M. Why is it trending so much? So if we click on it, we can get up to the minute fundamental news pulled from the, from the web. Uh, with articles talking about that particular uh, stock in this case. And so you can expand the article, uh, you can read a, a, a synopsis of it, and you can also click the link and, and view the entire article and read exactly what's going on in there. Coming in, uh, time stamped here, three hours ago, uh, and as you scroll down, you see maybe one was four hours ago, six hours ago. So up to the date, up to the minute, up to the hour news coming in uh, on whatever instrument you choose, organized for you. And so a uh, very easy way to do fundamental analysis using these advanced tools. So that can be part of your fundam fundamental analysis strategy. Now, besides those specific bits of information from the economic calendar as the scheduled announcement numbers come in uh, and also from articles you might find using the, the trading central feature here. You, you also can just have a general feel for the sentiment of what's going on fundamentally. Like right now, if you look at the headlines uh, on the, the major news websites, uh, I mean, you can't stop seeing headlines about uh, the 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 inflation numbers being at all-time highs, another 40-year record out of the U.S. yesterday and CPI data uh, showing rampant, rampant inflation. Uh, and, and it's not just the U.S. that's having this problem. It's all around the world. Uh, I think it was Sri Lanka had, is having all kinds of issues and problems politically now because of it. Uh, inflation's really taking its hold all around the globe. And so we can we know that just as a general thing, if you look at the headlines, and it's easy to get that feel and sentiment that there's a lot of fear that there's a looming recession coming. This is really uh, a fear that's building and, and growing momentum that, that, boy, there could be a bad recession coming over the next six months, year, uh, et cetera. And, and there's some signs that it could already be uh, starting. Perhaps we're, we're in the midst of a recession already and the data just hasn't been collected enough to show it. And so with all of that fear out there, uh, then then you go into the, the technical analysis with that understanding that, OK, the fundamental news is pretty negative. There's hyperinflation on the economic calendar. There are headlines about companies uh, laying off workers, etc. And so once you've done that, a uh, bit of fundamental analysis. Could be using the, the tools I just showed you from Trading Central, looking at which instruments have articles that are recent to see what's going on with specific instruments, or maybe you just do your own you know, headline uh, view to see what's going on, on on the major, whether it's Reuters, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, go to the major website, see what's the general feel right now. And, and once you have that uh, sentiment down and you understand fundamentally 
how things feel right now. Then you can get in and start to look for entry points and exit points in the direction that it makes sense fundamentally. Okay. And so uh, we might take a look at something like gold. We know gold is traditionally a safe haven against inflation. Well, wow, there's rampant hyper, uh, maybe not hyperinflation, but uh, larger than comfortable inflation in, in many areas around the world. There's a technical definition to the word hyperinflation. So uh, we, we maybe don't want to use that term unless it's the, 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 a large enough amount of inflation to, to qualify for that term. But certainly there's uh, quite high inflation around the world, more so than is maybe uh, viewed as uh, good for a healthy economy. So uh, we see gold dropping off and you say, wow, you know, there's super high inflation. Uh, people are worried about a recession coming and, and, and with all these recession, or I'm sorry, uh, inflation fears, uh, the real, reality of high inflation, why is gold dropping? Then? And, and it, it, it's a pretty easy answer. And we've been talking about this for the past weeks and really months as we've watched this occur, okay, as we've watched gold go down on a downtrend like this, right? We've all seen that uh, day after day, week after week, gold's been going down since it hit that uh, all-time high above 2,000 an ounce, right? Now we're over $300 an ounce below that. Uh, and so the answer as to why is gold dropping when there's high inflation, when gold is supposed to be an inflationary safe haven, the answer is pretty simple. It's because speculators understand that nations around the world are taking uh, measures to get rid of inflation now. And so since anti-inflationary measures have been taken, really starting from the beginning of this year, with interest rates going up, uh, with with stimulus packages being cut back, bond buying programs being tapered off, all of the things that caused the inflation, low interest rates, large stimulus packages, uh, all these measures that central banks and governments did to prop up the economy through the pandemic, which caused this high inflation, now those measures are being pulled back quite a bit. And an example is in the US, the interest rate was raised twice already this year, uh, 50 basis points, then this last time, 75 basis points. And because the inflation is so high, the expectation is, wow, they're going to raise the interest rate again soon uh, in a large way, maybe 75 basis points again, maybe a full uh, 1%, which would be called 100, per, 100 basis points. Uh, and so because there's the understanding that, wow, more anti-inflationary measures are coming, then that means people want to sell gold. Because if you're going to raise interest rates, that'll lower inflation. And if you're doing things to get rid of inflation, then that takes away the draw towards an inflationary safe haven like gold. So gold went up as inflation was rising. Now that measures are being taken to hopefully get rid of the high inflation, uh, folks are selling off gold. Okay, so U.S. dollar is strengthening. That's the opposite of inflation of the currency. U.S. dollar has been strengthening uh, week after week. And so, uh, you know, it's hit, hit parity with the euro. So, you know, with the U.S. dollar being almost equal to the value of the euro now, of course, gold is dropping, rushing out of gold and into the U.S. dollar. That's largely what's happening because of, of, of people understanding the interest rates going up on the U.S. dollar in a large way. Uh, so that looks like a good investment to people to, to pick up U.S. dollars. And so down goes gold. And so that's what we've looked at. These are two hour candles. We can go to something larger like one day candles and we can see a similar trend. OK, down, 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 down. OK, now what you might see is uh, indeed we've reached a bit of a support level on the one day candles. You know, I, I can I can draw a line straight across and say, OK, down here it hit about 1788, okay, 1788 on these one day candles. And so uh, then then it broke that and, and we moved to the current days and it broke that support. So you see, it's like a step going down, support, broken, support. Here's the breakthrough of that support that I had just drawn. And now we 
come down where we don't see any support on the one day candles. You look off to the left, there's no support over here. So how do we see the next support level? We go to one week candles and we say, okay, now we see where we are and where we could be headed. So let me get rid of some of these lines. And now you understand fundamentally why gold has been dropping week after week. Here's that all time high up here, 2070 an ounce or so. And on the one week candles dropping for one, two, three, four straight weeks, pulled back up, then dropped for one, two, three, four straight weeks. And we're down at uh, 17, 13, 17, 14 an ounce. And you say, okay, where's the next support level then? And we could look on the one week candles and say right about there. Okay, here's support, back up. You come over here, support, back up. Here again, support, back up. And now we look like we have a, a clear path down to that support level at 1673. Okay, we're at 1714 right now. So 1673, that's a good 30 plus dollars per ounce. Okay, that's even $40 per ounce down. So the fundamentals say, hey, gold could keep dropping. Why? Because anti-inflationary measures are being taken. And since we're looking at gold paired against the USD here, why is the, the US dollar so bullish? Hey, with those infl that inflation data that came in yesterday being at a 40 year high in the CPI data out of the US, that just increased the expectation of large interest rate increase coming again in the US. And so that continues to make the US dollar bullish and could pull gold down even further. Okay, now I'm not saying you shouldn't buy on gold here. If you feel like you want to buy, maybe you see on the five minute candles a support level that you line a scalp and see if it'll bounce back up. Great. If you think for some reason the US uh, will stop raising interest rates and the US dollar will weaken and gold could go rushing back up, by all means, buy on gold. Okay. But the point of this webinar is to try and identify the actual fundamental situation and then try and align your trading with that. And many times that helps you, not always, but many times. And a lot of times, if it doesn't, it wasn't that you weren't in the right direction. It was just the timing. And sometimes if you try it again, if the first shot loses, uh, then you find maybe success on that next try. Okay. So what we're looking at here then is we see a clear path down to 1673 before we get to the next support level on the one week candles. So let's say 1680 to be a little bit above that support level. Okay. So if we say sell on gold, Take profit, 1680. Now we probably want smaller candles to figure out what kind of stop loss you might use. Okay, we see it just broke this support level here. Okay, gold just broke below this support. So, uh, you know, if this truly is going to keep dropping, it shouldn't go back above this high up here, right? This should be a bit of a resistance. So if we go above that, broken support and say, okay, as long as it doesn't break back above one of these levels up here that you deem an important price level, then you might say uh, you, you'll you stay with the, the move, okay? So you pick the spot where the stop loss might make sense. And so maybe it's up here at 1736 above this broken support and above this little area here, okay? Or you might want to put it up higher. It's up to your your personal preference. So if I'm going to put a stop loss, I want it back above the broken support by some distance. So maybe I'm going 1735, something like that. Okay, my potential profit on this move is a little better than my risk, 168 to 106. And now what trade size would I take? That depends on your risk management preference. So if, if I know I want to risk X amount per trade, this is where the risk management features come in on our mobile app and, and on this web trader platform to help you out with your risk management. So if I know going into this, hey, I'm willing to risk 500. Okay, if that's the amount I decided I'm willing to risk and your amount would likely be different than that, whatever amount you know you're willing to risk per trade, whether it's 1% of your balance or whatever it is, 
Uh, now I can use the web trader to calculate that I have the right trade size for my stop loss setting, okay, and my take profit setting. So uh, I see I'm risking 105, and if I'm willing to risk 500, then I can go about five times bigger or, or maybe a little bit less than that. So if I go 0 0.22, now I'm risking 466, 0 0.23. 487, so 0 0.24 would get me there, okay? Risking 508, I said 500, okay, I'll go 508 uh, for a potential profit of 811, okay? If I like the risk management, how it's set up, I did my technical analysis, I feel that maybe I'm in alignment with the fundamental news, then I'm ready to go. So this is how you can do your trading in a way that you're combining fundamental news to, to determine the direction you want to trade and then using the technical analysis to see is it the right time to trade do i like the price do i like the the technical movement and here we can see there's a downtrend that occurred in the last six to eight hours that broke this support level that's confirming downward momentum and so your stop loss would make sense to have above that broken support level because if it's a true downtrend now it shouldn't go back up above there so if you put your stop loss up here somewhere uh if it does go back up there then hey hey you admit maybe you're wrong and maybe the fundamental news changed and 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 if that happened then you you take your small loss one percent half a percent two percent whatever uh amount that you're risking of, of your overall investment and then uh your potential profit is also determined uh by what the chart looks like many times. And we saw that support level wasn't until below 1700. And so that's where we have our take profit, just before that next support level on the one week candles. Okay, could easily come through, right? If we had done this before, look how many times it would have worked. We knew there was bearish pressure on gold, that the US was USD was strong for the same reasons we just outlined. And had you had a a pending order below this support level here, it would have sold and won, okay? And if we go back further in time, it would have worked again and again. Each time the support level was broken, it continued to drop further, like a staircase coming down. So uh, at some point that strategy will fail, okay? Uh, hopefully not this time, if you're making this move. Uh, hopefully it wins again. Uh, but if you stay consistently in alignment with what, what the fundamental news is dictating, you should find a, a good deal of success if you can align your technical analysis with the direction that the fundamental news is pushing things, okay? We can also look at something like the Euro USD. Why? Well, we understand why the USD is so bullish. Uh, and so we can take a look at something like one month candles and understand, okay? Look at these lows on the one month candles down here. This was the support level here. And we, we hit that support level and, and then broke it. Support was around $1.3, $1.4 on a, like a 20 year support level. Uh, and, and we're below that now. We're at parity basically, $1.00, and 24 pips, we're only 24 pips above what they call parity, equality between the Euro and the US dollar. You know, traditionally we've seen the Euro at dollar 15, dollar 20, even higher, and now it's almost exactly equal with the US dollar, and it looks to be ready to potentially break uh, for the first time in a long, long time below $1 even. I'm not saying for sure it will, but it looks like it, it absolutely could. Uh, if we go to 30 minute candles now, uh, we can start to zoom back and say, okay, here's that support level we drew at parity. Okay, this is $1 even right here. And it keeps coming down and testing it and testing it. Look over the past day or two. It hit the support at $1 even, back up 60, 70 pips. Hit the support at $1 even, back up 60, 70 pips, even 100 pips. Back down today got near $1 even, went back up 50 pips. Now here it comes down again. This looks like something that is going to keep testing the support level until potentially it might break it, okay? So what kind of uh, trade could we prepare that, okay, only if it breaks below a dollar and confirms a further downtrend, then I'll sell. 
And you might at the same time say, I could buy if it gets, you know, five pips above parity here. I could have a pending order to buy as well. Because look, look what happened once, right back up, twice, right back up, three times, right back up. Now, eventually that might fail and it might break the support level. Uh, a technical trader might still try to buy off of that support level down there right at $1. Uh, if you're trading fundamentally, which is what we're doing now, right, in this webinar, you don't necessarily go against the fundamentals. You want to align the technicals with the fundamentals. If there was some headline that came out said, that said USD uh, is not going to raise their interest rate or that the Euro European Union is ready to have a large interest rate increase, then the fundamentals would say buy, right? But it's the opposite. It's not the European Union promising a large interest rate increase real soon. It's the U.S. So uh, the fundamentals say the U.S. dollar maybe should continue to weigh down on the euro, that the U.S. dollar is the one that should be strong fundamentally because an expected 75 to 100 basis point interest rate increase could be right around the corner for the U.S. dollar. And since the fundamental news says, hey, you should sell on Euro USD, then you wait for confirmation. If you want to align your technical analysis with that fundamental view, then you uh, wait for a technical confirmation of that downward movement that the fundamental news is predicting. Okay. And so, how do you do a technical confirmation? You might wait for this support level to break if it breaks, right? There's no guarantee. But if you put a pending order down here to sell at 0 0.995, right? Or something like that, just a number of pips below parity, then, then you can understand that uh, the support was broken, then you sell. Because the broken support, look what happened here when this support level broke. It plunged further, right? Same thing back here. When this support level broke, it plunged further. And back here, same thing. When this support level broke, it plunged further. So each time a support level broke, it plunged further. Okay, that's the pattern on the chart for the past, really, months as the U.S. dollar has been strengthening. So since it seems like a stairway to the basement here, you can just go with the trend until the trend fails, right? Or until the fundamental news changes. So uh certainly this could be the spot that fails or not right but the the fund the fundamental uh situation is usd should strengthen against the euro you see the euro dropping as we're talking uh about 20 or 30 pips from this 50 pip above parity now only 20 pips above uh if it breaks below here you could have a pending order ready to go okay if if you're waiting for confirmation of a downtrend so execute when price hits, if you say, okay, I just want it to get below $1, so 0 0.9990, 10 pips below parity, and maybe that confirms in your mind that it'll keep dropping further, okay? Doesn't have to be that exact entry price, right? But it's the, the idea that counts. Uh, take profit. There's no support level down there, <laughs> not in the last 20 years, right? So we don't have anything on the chart to look at. Da the data doesn't go back far enough to find a support level below $1. So once it breaks, it really could take a plunge and not find any support to slow it down, right? So you just, in this case, you just need to do uh, what is your profit goal here? What are you looking for? And so you could say, okay, what if, what if I think it could go down to 0 0.95, okay? Five cents below parity. You know, that's 500 pips, right? That's a huge movement, really. Uh, you could do something less and not have such a large movement goal. You could say, even if it goes to 99, okay, that's 90 pips down from your entry point, okay? But that's up to you. Where would you, where would you put that? Uh, and your stop loss, you could say, okay, once it breaks below a dollar, if it's a true breakthrough and there's going to be downward momentum, then I only need to get my stop loss back above that one dollar, maybe by 10 pips. And, and if it goes back up, okay, I take a small 20 pip loss. So, or your perspective could be you put the stop loss further up. It's up to you. Okay. 
uh, in case it spikes below, spikes back up, and then goes down. You don't want it to hit your stop loss too easy. So maybe we put it 25 pips up, something like that. In, in whatever case, you put a stop loss above a price level that you think it shouldn't go back up to unless you're ready to give up on the position once it does go back up that way. So I could say, I don't know, 15 pips back above parity uh, to my stop loss. Whoops. 15 pips would be 0015. Let's not get crazy there. And so uh, we see it's all better than three to one potential profit to risk. Okay, so you could even try it a second time. If it does break through, enters your trade to sell, and then goes back up and above a dollar and hits your stop loss, you could set another pending order below there. And if it breaks through and then that's the real one and it plunges, you, you're only 50% on those two tries. But if the payout is almost three times or four times the risk, you're still in overall profit. Okay, this is the way you can look at that uh, on, on a lot of moves like this. So, I. Uh, now what we do is we say, okay, what trade size would make sense? If it breaks below a dollar and starts plunging, great. I, I, the bigger the trade, the better if it's going to win. But if it's going to lose, I better understand how much I'm risking. And again, if I'm willing to risk, I don't know, 500 or 250 or whatever it is per trade, now the, I, it, the system calculates for me the risk. So if I put one full lot, I would risk 250 back up to my stop loss and I would go after 900 in profit. So it calculates for you. When, when you get it set the way you like it, then you're ready to go. You prepare your, what we call an order, a pending order. So we did one market move uh, here. This was on gold. It's already moved into profit a little bit. Uh, the momentum's on our side. The fundamentals are on our side in both of these moves. Uh, so it makes sense that right in the beginning, it's already moved the right way. Uh, but could pull back obviously as well. Uh, and then here's the pending order, waiting for the entry price, okay? Trigger price, 99.9, 10 pips below parity. If it hits there, it'll sell, okay? Uh, any questions on what we've covered? I think this is a good place maybe to stop. We've been going for over a half hour. I uh, haven't seen any questions pop up as we're going along. Uh, type okay if, if everything was clear. On, the, on the, the concepts of applying the fundamentals with your technical analysis, uh, or if you have questions about some of the tools we looked at on our, for, for doing technical and fundamental analysis on the platform here on our app, I'm happy to answer those questions as well. For those of you wondering about other instruments, there's a lot of pressure on oil because of fears of recession. That's why oil's been pulling down quite a bit. So there's bearish pressure on oil. Doesn't mean it can't spike back up if there's fears about the war with Russia and Ukraine and supply coming out of Russia, that sort of thing. And we have to pay attention to what the Saudi uh, decision makers will say to, to President Biden as he goes over to Saudi Arabia. Will they increase production or not? So there are other things other than potential recession that could move oil prices. So you have to pay attention. Sometimes there's you know, recession fears pulls oil down and then supply fears spikes oil back up. But uh, the, the point is, whatever you're trading on, pay attention to the fundamentals that are moving the price. Like we did with gold just now, like we did with the Euro USD. And it should help you really get into alignment, uh, your technical analysis in the direction that the fundamental pressure is going. All right, everybody, I don't see any questions popping up. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, it's been my pleasure presenting. Uh, good luck with your trading the rest of the day and uh, the rest of the week. Bye for now.